And good morning, everyone. Uh, I suppose it's a good afternoon to some of you as well. Uh, welcome. Another in a long running series of webinars from Full Compass Systems here. Today we have Designing Business Music Systems with QSC. My name is Jim Rip. I'm the manager of technical training and sales development here at Full Compass Systems. I'll be the moderator. And joining us today is Dale Sandberg, sales engineer with QSC. Uh, some of you are still logging in here, I see. So let's uh, quick get through these little housekeeping issues and then we'll we'll move on and introduce Dale here. So um, we have a question feature that's available to you on the toolbar there. Go ahead and type in your questions anytime during the presentation. I will then present them to Dale uh, at the end of the session. And feel free, again, anytime during the presentation to ask away. We do have a recording of the presentation that will be available to you on our YouTube channel. So if you happen to duck out halfway through or lose connection, no worries. I will be sending you that link um, in the next few days so that you can view that. Also, we have a very short survey at the end that helps us to uh, bring you the best content that you are all asking for. So without any further ado, let's inter introduce our presenter today. Dale Sandberg, he's sales engineer in the hospitality and entertainment section of QSC. Dale, welcome. Well, hello, thank you. Um, you and like brief reading through here, it says you 30 years in the industry. Um, there's I, in 30 years, I think there's probably a lot more of a bio on you than than what we have here. But why don't you fill in a few of the the blanks for everybody? Just sure. So here's your chance to talk about yourself. Yeah, okay. Um, so I started actually uh, mixing sound while I was in college and uh, actually got a job doing that. Um, and uh, following college, so I, and I, while I was in college, I got a degree in, educa in, in education, in engineering. Um, and, uh, and then following college, I, uh, rather than get, I broke my mom's heart, rather than get a real quote unquote engineering job, um, I uh, did studio work for a number of years, um, and uh, and then um, I joined Harman uh, and uh, developed products for Harman for about uh, ten years. I was uh, working uh, primarily for DBX and BSS, um, and then uh, about twelve years ago, I joined uh, um, QSC, and uh, actually coming up on thirteen years. Um, and so I have been uh, developing products and using audio products and designing systems for, um, for I think, actually, I started mixing sound in 1990. So uh, um, it, it, we are into my 30th year. Um, and uh, I, love, I love this industry. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, well versed in the audio section for sure. Uh, certainly, certainly. Um, should I switch over to yeah. my? Yeah, I'm going to uh, send you the presentership here, and then okay. uh, you can go ahead and take that over. And cool. I will, uh, if there's an urgent question in the middle of the presentation, then I'll, I'll kind of break in there. But go ahead and take it away, Dale. That sounds that sounds good. Um, so uh, at QSC, one of the reasons that I really like QSC is the fact that we try to develop products as a family. Um, we don't always succeed, but in general, we try to create a complete, complete product solution. So uh, a couple of years ago, we decided that we needed to get more into what we call business music, which is kind of a, a, an odd category. Um, basically, it's applications where audio is in the system, but it may not be the primary focus of the system. Um, and so think about applications such as restaurant, retail stores, gyms, um, uh, community centers, um, you know, again, all these applications where you've got audio there, but it may not be the primary focus of that system. And so, and I need to click here to make that work. Um, and so we created a family of products. We created some new um, processors, uh, some new amplifiers, and some new loudspeakers. Now today I'm going to focus primarily on the processor um, but uh, recognize that there are 
um, some new amplifiers and loudspeakers that go along that go along with these. You do not need to use these amplifiers or speakers with these processors, but uh, but they certainly work very well together. Um, as we were developing this solution, we recognized that we needed a processor that was going to be affordable, but still provide um, a lot of processing power um, and and uh, you know the need for um, intuitive interfaces. All of these pieces were necessary. And so what we did was we um, we created this family of processors called the MPM series, and they they are uh, they function very 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 well for background and foreground music. The only difference between the processors themselves are the number of inputs and outputs. So the MPM40 um, has uh, four mic line inputs, four line level inputs, and four output zones. The MPM80 has eight mic line inputs, eight uh, line level inputs and eight outputs for for zoning uh, type functions. Now the um, in addition to that they do have a dedicated output for music on hold so in a number of these types of applications uh, whether it's a restaurant or a gym or whatever um, they want to be able to you know put a customer on hold on the phone and then send out music to that uh, phone system and so this is a dedicated output it's already transformer balanced, designed to interface with the PBX, with the phone system. Um, there's also two logic inputs uh, or general purpose inputs. These inputs can be um, used to trigger scene recalls. Uh, as an example, if I need to mute the system for a fire alarm, um, or I've got a um, maybe I've got a an air wall and I've got two uh, like I've got a divisible space I can open that air wall and I've got maybe a little infrared sensor and so when that uh, when that wall opens up it's one big zone when the wall you know closes now I've got two independent zones and I'm recalling different scenes to to do that functionality. For control, of course, we've got Ethernet. That's how we set it up. That's how we control the system. But I also have these two dedicated ports called MFC ports. These are our multifunction controllers. And uh, each port, um, this uses, this is not Ethernet. Um, this is RS-485. And so each port will drive up to four of our wall controllers in a daisy chain. The, uh, because we're using RS-485, we can run very long distances up to uh, 250 meters, which is about almost 850 feet. So you can have some really long runs and, and you can see we've got, we can have up to two runs. Each can have up to four wall controllers. So a total of eight wall controllers in a system. On the front panel, we've got a couple of features as well. We've got a headphone jack. Why would you want a headphone jack on a DSP processor? makes it really convenient for me to check my signal levels. I can uh, you know, look at the number of inputs. I can see what signals I have going in and actually queue up and listen to each one of those inputs. And the same thing for the outputs. So um, you know, just useful uh, capability there. I've also got this USB port directly on the front panel so I can walk up to the unit, plug in a USB stick with my program file on it and, uh, and, and you know, select the program and, and I'm up and running. Now the architecture within the MPM device is, uh, um, sometimes these are called zone mixers and sometimes they're called DSP processors. The way they primarily function is I've got outputs for each one of my zones. Each output can select its source. So typically these are source selectors. Um, and so I select my background music source and then I need to switch over and select my CD player. That said, I do have a mixer built into it as well. So I can take any and in fact all of the inputs and mix them together and then select that mixer as a source. Um, which is really handy for, think about the application where I've got a restaurant, but on the weekend they might have the acoustic trio that comes in and uh, um, uh, you know, wants to play a little live set. I can have uh, um, you know some live microphones. I can mix those live microphones, and my source for that uh, for that particular um, zone can be the mixer. And then when they are all done with their set, I can switch it back over to my background music source. Um, so uh, 
really useful there. Um, and of course, I've got processing on the inputs and outputs. Um, input processing to uh, ensure that the microphones or the other inputs are, are functioning and sound as good as they can. Same thing on the output side. This is uh, typically loudspeaker and zone processing, again, to ensure that uh, I've maximized the uh, uh, sonic performance of that, of that system. Now, when you're talking with customers, uh, one of the things that often occurs is control is the system for the end customer. So whether I'm talking with the, um, the hostess at a restaurant or a um, you know the manager of a spin studio or um, you know working with a retirement center and they want to be able to control their system oftentimes control is the way that they they use and think about this system um, and so we offer two types of control we've got our uh, wall controllers our mfcs um, and uh, and here we have uh, this is the u.s style the square the square style is just a european uh, style uh, wall boxes, so decor style in here in the U.S. And then we've got our MP Manage uh, uh, software application. Um, and so just a little bit about each one of those. Um, MP Manage, it is a software application dedicated for the end user. So this is something that you can give to the manager, to the bartender, to um, you know a spin instructor, whomever, and it gives them control over the system. They've got zone control. They can actually select different zones, turn the volume up, turn the volume down, select sources. They can do scene recall. Um, you know, maybe it's a, they've got a function room and they want to recall a specific scene for that function room. Um, they can schedule scenes. Uh, and so there's, there's just a lot of uh, capability through this MP Manage application. Um, probably the thing that many people find very interesting is I have the ability to do paging via Wi-Fi because my phone is connected to the system via my via the Wi-Fi network. Um, I can actually go in, I press the paging button, and uh, and now I can record a page into my phone. Because I'm recording into my phone, two things. Number one, I'm using the microphone for the phone, so I don't need to provide a separate microphone. And it's a microphone everybody knows how to use. Number two, I'm recording it into my phone. So this is a store and forward page, which means there's not going to be any feedback that the customer hears. When I'm done recording, I hit send, and now that page is sent via Wi-Fi. It's packetized and sent via Wi-Fi to the network, which can then play it into the system. So a really unique application. And uh, you know, if you need paging, not everybody needs paging. But if you need paging, it's a very unique and, and powerful way of doing this. Now to set the system up, uh, I would use the MP install application. And we'll be spending probably the rest of our time looking at that. Um, I'm gonna hop into MP install, but this is, uh, this is available for both the uh, um, tablets, iOS and Android, as well as uh, um, computers, PCs. And so I'm just going to alt tab over to my yeah lots of stuff open. So at this point everybody should see my uh, this is MP install and uh, um, the navigation is very very simple for this application. Um, everything's on the right hand side so I'm looking at my inputs and I see my four this I'm working with an MPM 40 and I'm and I see four my client inputs. I see my four sets of RCAs right here. And I do have some other inputs available to me. That USB port can actually be used as a USB audio player. And so I've actually got signal coming in from that USB audio player right now. This is my network input and this is where I receive my Wi-Fi page. And so if I was using that functionality, that page would come through this and I could then select that Wi-Fi page as a source for different zones. So those are my those are my inputs, and you can see I've got different processing functions. I can go in and and uh, you know make an adjustment in this parametric EQ if I wanted to high pass filter that, and and you know if this is a microphone, I might want to make some other adjustments as well. Um, so those are those are my inputs and and the various input DSP functions, and we'll get back into that in a little bit later. My outputs have very much the same sort of uh, organizational structure. Um, in this case, I've got four 
This is an MPM 40, like I said. So I've got four outputs that can be set up for zones. Now, in my case, um, I've got a home office. And so here I've got a stereo a pair of speakers in my office. And I do actually have a subwoofer that I've uh, set up as well. So kind of a nice little uh, good sounding office here. Um, and I've got the other DSP functions, and like I said, we'll get into these a little bit later. Here is the mixer, and I can take any of my inputs and mix them together. Uh, because I've got an MPM40, I can see all eight inputs across, and uh, so input one, input two, and these are just mic in, microphone inputs. Um, my CD player is here, and so I can bring that into my mixer, and now you can see my mixer is getting signal level. And then my um, I, my PC is coming in as a stereo input, um, whereas I'm mono summing the CD player. Another thing to notice in the mixer is I do have auto mixing capabilities. Um, this is a fairly simple auto mixer. Basically, um, it's available on the microphone inputs, and uh, um, you know it uses the combination of the gate and the compressor. And so it basically it shares the gain between any of the channels that have the auto mix turned on. And so if one person's talking, he gets all the gain. If two people talk, they share the gain and they share them in this ratio. So it's a, um, like I said, fairly simple auto mixer, but very useful for like a panel discussion or um, something of that nature. Now, one of the other tools that we put into the MPM um, devices is this uh, setup wizard. You do not have to use the setup wizard, um, but it is a quick way of kind of going through the operations that are necessary. Um, and so um, basically it's a, it's a list of links and, and functions. So if I had a configuration file that I wanted to load, I could click on the link, find the configuration file. Oh yeah, I'm gonna load this. Um, this is an Orange Theory Fitness that I helped design for somebody or a, um, you know, this is a, a van store. And, and, you know, I've got others located in other folders, but to, um, so I would copy that in and I would, I would recall that. And if I wanted to, I could check that box off. Or if I wanted to start with just uh, in, input configurations, I'm going to go to input one. And here, let's just say I've got a, a paging mic. Now here's all my functions that I can set up with that input to input trim so I can adjust the input gain. If that microphone required phantom power, I could switch it on there. Um, I do have the ability to link inputs if I wanted to, um, and invert polarity if that's you know, if you've got a polarity problem. Um, channel safe is for use with scenes. So if I have scene recalls and I don't want it to change anything in this particular channel, I could put that channel into safe mode. Another interesting feature that I've got is I do have input delay available on every single input. And this is really designed to help where we, um, if you're going through a video matrix, so you've got a, a video signal coming in, um, sometimes that video signal is delayed when it goes through a video matrix. And so I can delay my audio to match the video. So I don't end up with the, uh, basically the samurai movie effect. Um, where you see the lips flap and then you hear, actually it'd be the other way around. You hear the, you hear the sound and then you see the lips move. Um, and so that's, uh, um, this video sync delay is, is pretty useful. So this is input one. If once I'm happy with this, I can go to input two, click on the next. Now I'm at input two and just keep going through my inputs. Great. I can check that box off. Output configuration, same sort of idea. Um, in this case, of course, I can name my output, stereo link, polarity. Many of the features are the same. I've got an output delay. One thing, I, one thing that's kind of unique here is I do have a minimum and maximum. And so um, when I'm working with an output, this is the master level for the zone. And if I, I'm going to go and actually select a source so we can hear something. Um, and I know I've got my USB player playing. Go back to my setup. So I have no idea what track that is and probably the end of the song there. But uh, um, but you can see the numbers up above the fader go from 0 to 100%. Yeah, there we go. Um, I can set the minimum level and the maximum level 
for that fader. And so I can crank this way down. That is as loud as this zone is going to get. And now when I turn it down to zero, this is as soft as that zone is going to get. And so I can choose the range for the gain. This fader is the same fader as if the user is controlling a wall controller or is using the smartphone application, MP Manage. So it's a really nice and convenient way of setting a minimum and maximum for that particular zone. I'm just going to turn that down. Um, and so this is output one, output two. Now these are stereo paired, so they're going to be the same. Output three, different level and different stuff, right? Great. I'm happy with my outputs. And I can, so I'm just working through this uh, setup process. When we were developing this product, we talked with a lot of integrators and many of them said the same thing. I can find my way around the DSP. My biggest problem is I'm not sure when I'm done programming, which told us that they felt confident in their abilities with DSP, but not, but they weren't sure that they knew all the steps. And so we basically, here, here's a list of the steps. And if you go through these, you can feel confident you've done everything. Um, step four would be assigning sources. Now sources, are um, the list of sources that are available to the end user. So you can see that under selectable sources in this middle pane here. And it shows, in this case, it shows USB player, Bluetooth, Blue T, uh, PC left and right, and my CD player. And if I select that source, that's, I've got a Michael Jackson CD in, a little bit of throwback there. Um, and nothing coming in from my PC because I didn't want to have any sort of feedback in my system. Bluetooth, nothing coming in on the Bluetooth right now. But again, I do have that USB player. So the end user would see these four sources show up. Down here it says none, and so they wouldn't see these. But I could add other sources. Maybe I'm going to add that mixer. Yeah, so I can, uh, I'll just close that for now. So that mixer, now if I selected that mixer, it would be a source or I can make this all none. I just scroll up here and, and uh, I'm gonna uh, re remove that CD player, let's say. Great, now they only see the, uh, the computer, the Bluetooth input, and the USB player. So whatever you see is what the end customer will see. Now another feature I have in my selectable, or in my sources, is I have priority sources. These essentially allow you to duck or lower the level for the audio, whatever's playing here, and these priority sources will play over the top of it. And so in this case, you can see I've got my Wi-Fi paging input selected, but I could have any, you know, I potentially I input three, let's pretend as a jukebox. And if I labeled it as jukebox, it would show up as jukebox. And now I could set the level for that jukebox. I could set my threshold for the ducking and how far I want it to duck the music. 60 dB or you know 6 dB whatever and then how long I need it to hold afterwards it's uh, after the song is done playing so just some useful tools here in my in my sources again once I'm all happy with this go back to my setup wizard check that box off now probably the last and and in many respects the most important thing you're going to do architecturally is set up loudspeakers and so we actually have a speaker um, preset uh, that's available to you. And so here I can select, and, and uh, this particular zone is output one in, for my office. Um, and so I can go in and select any of the QSC loudspeakers. Now we've only got QSC loudspeakers in our factory library. Um, and so maybe I've got E-series speakers, or in, in, actually in my case, I do have ADS 6Ts which are a great sounding loudspeaker, and I would just select that and hit recall, and it's, and it's loaded that speaker tuning. Sounds great. But what if you don't have QSC loudspeakers? Well, first of all, you should always buy QSC loudspeakers, but in case you can't, in case you don't have them, in case there's already speakers they want you to use, you can go in and actually create your own speaker tuning. And so I can, I can adjust the CQ, create my own speaker tuning, and uh, make sure that it's, uh, um, you know, what, what I need it to be for that particular loudspeaker, great. Once I'm done, I could go back and actually save that as a user preset. So, you know, you've got a Tannoy speaker, JBL, whatever. You can save that in your, in your speaker library.
And then the next time you go to new, go to do an install, or maybe just the next zone, you can recall that same speaker tuning. Again, trying to save you time. So that's the, uh, the it, and so I'm done with this output. I go to the next, I go to the next, I, I select each one. Great. Speakers. At this point, I'm done with the probably the majority of the architectural elements of my system, signal routing and those kinds of things. But maybe I need to go in and, and adjust some of the DSP. You know, maybe I want to go in and adjust my dynamics. Um, in your dynamics, on your input side, we've got a compressor, useful mostly for microphones, or oftentimes for microphones, or automatic gain control. Automatic gain control is useful for content sources. If I've got a CD player, sometimes my CDs are, you know, from music from the 60s, and sometimes it's music from the from the 90s, right? And there's going to be a huge gain difference. An automatic gain control can help with that. I've also got a noise gate, again, uh, mostly useful for uh, microphones or other potentially noisy sources. So those are my DSP elements that I've got on my inputs. And you can see I've gone and turned all these on for this particular input. Go back to my setup wizard, check that box off. I've got the same kind of thing on the output side. So here we see the DSP elements here. Um, sources we've already seen. Um, speaker presets we've already seen. I've got a graph EQ available to me. Everybody knows how that works. I do have feedback suppression available to me. And this is something that is most useful for live applications. Um, I've got up to 12 filters. It's a, it's a very useful feature for those applications. Another really powerful tool is a loudness function. And I may go and turn my volume back down before I do this. It's actually already pretty low. Okay, so that loudness function. The way loudness works, the way this function works is it's dependent on the way our ears hear things. And, and behind this, you see these curves. These are called the Fletcher-Munson or the equal loudness contours, um, Fletcher-Munson curves. Basically, they describe how our ears hear. When the sounds are very soft, we need a lot more bass than we do when the sounds are very loud, which is why every single speaker demo you have ever heard has been typically loud music, because it makes the low frequencies sound better. The way loudness works is it essentially compensates for this change in our hearing. The way I would set it up is I would set my, my control, my volume control for this zone pretty much in the middle of its range, right around 50 or so. I would turn loudness on, and then I would adjust the threshold so it is just below that line. When I turn the volume up, system sounds great because our ears flatten out. But when I turn the system down and cross that line, it begins to boost the bass following these equal loudness contours. And so if I, you know, the more I turn it down, the more it boosts the bass. Again, trying to maximize the sonic performance of that system. And so this is a really useful tool, especially for background music applications where they want the system to sound full range, no matter whether it's softer or louder. They would still want it to sound very full range and musical. And then finally, there's a limiter on the output that you can, uh, that you can uh, set up to design to protect your loudspeakers. So I've worked through you know, a bunch of the configuration here. Maybe my last step would be setting up wall controllers in the smartphone. Now, if you remember, I said that this will support up to eight wall controllers. And so I can select the wall controller. I can name it. So this is my office. And in my office, I can choose whether it's a single zone, if it were, whether it only controls a single zone, whether it controls multiple zones, or whether it will only recall scenes. And in, you know, in the case of scenes only, then I would just make sure I've got these scenes selected and they would show up on my list of scenes. I like to have it in single zone mode. And in single zone mode, it controls the office, which means it's got volume and source select for that particular office. Once I'm happy with the way it's set up, I would hit the pair button. And now 
all any wall controllers that are that are connected and they're just connected via cat5 the wall controller says on its front panel it says press a button to pair this device and it gives me a little hexadec or a little ascii address 48874fad so i push this button any of the buttons it's paired with 48874ad so it knows that this is the office and i would go to the next one set that up push the button go to the next one and so forth and so forth so really really simple so that's setting up wall controllers and go back to my wizard check that box off the last step might be setting up the smartphone setting up smartphones is like setting up wall controllers you just got more stuff and so what we offer is eight different user profiles or user access levels you could you could think of it as and so maybe my manager i want to give the manager access to different zones um, maybe not the sub right and what other functions do they have access to can that manager do wi-fi paging can he recall scenes can he use the audio mixer and all these things right i can i uh, can he um, play music from the usb player now security is a really important function security enables that manager to allow other users and so i could have a bartender or a spin instructor i can you know whatever uh, spin instructor right um and so let's pretend this is our spin studio on in the patio so the spin instructor has access to that zone but maybe not other zones can they do paging no but they can use the usb audio player or and or maybe the mixer right and so you can pick and choose maybe they need to recall a scene for their spin class whatever so when tom my new spin instructor comes in he brings his phone i tell him to download mp manage on his phone then i assign him spin instructor access level and now he's got access to whatever functions i have given him here and it's uh, yes i've saved that profile so now he's got access to those functions very simple to do and i can set up to other other users as well now this setup these setup functions this setup wizard really takes you through basically the input and output menus it also takes you to other places in the menu so other tools that i have here here's your configurations that we've already seen right load a configuration we didn't see scenes, so this is how I save and recall scenes. I could save a scene, and I can save all channels, or I could just save specific channels if I just want a scene to be on outputs one and two, as an example, right? So I just deselect these, and now I would save that. Um, other functions I have here, I can create a schedule of functions. So I've got a new event and uh you know maybe this is my um uh spin class right and uh great you know when does that start oh that starts at, you know those guys they they start early in the morning so let's uh let's start that at 6 a.m right uh, um and then what scene is it going to load well, let's pretend we've got a spin scene here let's pretend that's it right so it's going to load that how often does this repeat oh that is every um weekday oh man and of course <laughs> it just uh, i think it just loaded the scene accidentally okay well never mind i'll turn that off and i'll go and reload something else anyway um the the sound in my in my home office just stopped so i think it loaded the scene um so you can so you can create a schedule we've already seen wall controller set up we've seen smartphone set up I can set up my general purpose inputs. So I've got two general purpose inputs, which means I've got four states, GPI one open and closed and GPI two open and closed. And so I can select from my scenes for each of these. I've also got a report function. Now this report is useful if, you, if you're working with a project manager. So I could type in the job site, right? This is a, a Susie's Spin Studio. Um, work order number, the, what's the address? who's the electrical contractor, who's the, who's the project manager, right? It's just information I can load. Once I'm done, I can generate, re, generate a report. This creates a text file 
that has a lot of really helpful information. It is just a text file for the project manager, but basically it gives them all the input names, all the output names, all the signal routing, all the various steps that were gone through, um, any wall controllers that were set up, uh, smartphone uh, information that was set up, um, the passwords to the system, all of that information is part of that uh, report. So just a useful tool. If so, because I'm running this on a PC, it just generates a report and then it saves it as a file. If I'm working on a tablet, it will actually automatically load my e load my email with that text file, and then I can just type in the email address of that project manager, and it will email it directly. So again, just just another useful tool. Um, so I've now gone through pretty much every single screen on my inputs and outputs. Oh, actually, I did skip a couple. Couple more things. Um, so here's sort of my uh, setup for you know network security uh, or, or network stuff. So setting up my IP address and that kind of stuff. Um, security. This is where I set passwords. There are three passwords: one for MP install, this piece of software; one for MP manage, which would be the um, the smartphone application that I give to the end customer, and one for third-party control. We do have an API available. And so if you want to control the MPM device from Crestron, from RTI, from QSYS, from whatever third-party device you can. And then finally, we do have a system test function. Here, I can send signals like pink noise to my outputs or a sine wave or even just an input. And so I could select that CD player. And now if I hit enable, um, my CD player is going and I would just select my office and and so I, you know, I, I can bring that input in. And so if you always want to listen to the, you know, I always listen to that uh, Steely Dan track to to do my system tuning. I can I can send that, um, or pink noise or sine wave that I don't want to listen to. I've also got an RTA input. And so if I select my CD player, I know there's signal coming in on that CD player, and I can see whatever's coming in or going out to that zone. And right now there's nothing going to my office or the patio or that subwoofer. So it's just, a, again, it's just a useful tool. So we have now seen every single screen in the uh, uh, MP uh, install software. And you can see it's, it's, it's pretty simple and easy to operate. Um, oh, I didn't do queue. So if I wanted to queue up a, a zone, I could click queue here or in any input or output there, I've got a queue button as well. Here's my queue level for this particular uh, system. So that would be the headphone queue, Jack. Um, copy and paste, so I can copy and paste parameters, previous and next, it'll jump to the next uh, um, parameter. So if I'm in uh, GraphKey queue and I select, uh, turn this on and select one of these, and then I click next, 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 it could just jump through these. I can nudge them up and down, um, zero that. And I've also got fine control as well, so really small uh, steps. So really simple stuff. We have now gone through every single screen and seen every single screen, just reset that, um, in the MPM uh, install application. At this point, are there any questions? Jim, do you, do you have any questions? Have you right, received you any questions? Yeah. It looks like we we do have a few here. Okay. Um, we can you I see you hit you have processing available there. Can you add external processing? Um, no, because well, yes, of course you can always add external processing. You could have processing upstream of the of the inputs, and you could have processing downstream of the outputs. But there's no insert jack that would allow you to insert processing somewhere in the chain. So um, you know, the, the, the short answer is no, unless you're using analog processing on the input or output before you go in or out of the device. Okay, and this one comes from uh, Michael. If as an installer, somebody somehow wrecks the, the whole setup, is there a way to reset that via the internet without visiting your install? 
or um, yes yeah because yeah. this is, that's a great question because this is an ethernet device i can connect to it remotely i i have customers currently who are based um in seattle and they've got a number of their customers are um in chicago in atlanta and they can and do remotely control that system um there is actually i realized there was one screen that we didn't really get into and i want to show that briefly here's my reset button and so this is just the hardware settings it's under menu and this is hardware settings and now i can see this is the time here in salt lake and i and i uh you know i sync this uh, uh boy i want to say a couple of weeks ago so you can see the clock has drifted slightly um but uh, um but you can see okay this is where i am and i've got some log files and and you know download i can upgrade you know the the um, firmware in the device but this is my reset button for the system and uh you know simple enough to do um the most recent version one thing to note here is i do have a switch for usb playback um because many of our customers sell content this is defaulted to the off position which means that usb player is hidden from the end customer i find it to be a very useful tool so i generally will turn it on but default from the factory this is in the off position but yeah great question and this is where you'd reset it but you would need to connect to it via the obviously via ethernet and this is one well thought out uh oh uh, <laughs> just about everything is covered uh you can block permissions you know not everybody has full access to it right um, one other quick question we have is with the mfc controllers mm -hmm. I see between the the 40 and the 80 you've doubled inputs and outputs four to yes. eight on both and does it double the mfc connections as well or no does it, it does not out? that's a that, that is a good question as well um yeah so to simplify the hardware, we just gave them both the uh, capability of having eight wall controllers. Um, and so both the MPM40 and the MPM80 have, have uh, two um, RJ45 ports, um, which are for uh, MFCs. And so they both have uh, a maximum of eight wall controllers. Yeah, good question. Excellent. That's, that's it for the questions that I have. Super. Well, um, let me just, uh, I think that brings me back to my presentation. So, you know, unfortunately, and, and we're, we're kind of getting low on time here, um, we spent the majority of our time on the MPM zone mixer, zone processor device. Um, we do have other new products in this system. We've got some subwoofer satellite loudspeakers and some new amplifiers that are, that are really um, flexible. Um, with a with a power sharing type of algorithm uh, built into them. And so I would suggest that there, that's the MPA series. Um, I would suggest you perhaps look into those as well. But but this new family of business music uh, uh, products, uh, our new subsats, our new amplifiers, and, and the new MPM processor really complete a, 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 a very powerful and capable uh, system um, and, and really give you all the tools that you need um, for, for these business music types of, types of applications. I really appreciate everybody's time. And we are you know, just coming up to the 45 minute mark. Um, if there's any further questions, uh, you know, feel free to ask now, or um, you can, uh, uh, you know, I'm sure that you can put them in an email to Jim and he can forward them on to me and I'll, I'll make sure I answer those. Yeah, I do want to mention real quick if, if, to everybody that there is a handout uh, that is available. Um, it does show some different bundles. Um, we have those bundles already set up on Full Compass website. So it's it's a great starter point, or it, it could be an exact match of what you have, uh, what you're looking to put in, into your business as well. Other than that, uh, I do want to mention that because of uh, the way the world is today, we are ramping up the number of webinars that we are presenting. And I, I <laughs> so we, we have we used to run one a month. Now we're at three a month. So it keeps me busy. That's for sure. And we are relying on great resources like like Dale at QSC. Thank you so much, Dale, for for uh, presenting all of this again. Very, very in-depth presentation with a lot of features built into that thing. It's absolutely amazing. 
thank you for the opportunity. You bet. And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, further questions, feel free to email me at jrip at fullcompass.com. That's J-R-I-P-P -P at fullcompass.com. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Have a great day.